I've mixed three cups of gel coat five minutes apart. And as soon as I'm through recording this, I'm going to mix one more. And this timer is set, well, was set for 20 minutes, which will be when the first cup of gel coat is about to set up. And now I can use each one of them five minutes apart and lay up wet on wet all the way through as one continuous piece of gel coat. And by the time I got to the other end, the first end had set up enough that I can start laying fiberglass over it. So in one shot, I do fiberglass and gel coat. When? Well, now well, I guess is the time for an oscillating spindle sander. So now that I've got my oscillating spindle sander put together, it's a better tool for sanding out the middle of these. Oh yeah, a little turbo does a good job of clearing out dust and blowing dust off of me before I go in the house. And I always lose the hole saw from the drill. Almost every time. There's a little too much fiberglass there to just poke through with the sander, so I drill the hole. And what did I say about losing the hole saw every time? Oh yeah, and there are different size spindles for sanding different size holes. Now I'm making the back side of each of these as flat as I can in preparation for gluing the two together. And I'm also cutting them to approximately the same size so my clamps will fit easier. And this is just thickened polyester resin that's been catalyzed and I pile a whole bunch on and then try to line up the front and back halves before clamping it down. And this is kind of a Pathfinder prototype and I'm realizing here that I really shouldn't clamp it like this. What I need is to cut some boards to the shape that goes in between all the circles and out to the very edge and have a set for the front and the back and clamp on the boards. That'll make the front surface a lot smoother than it came out this time. And since this is a sort of a pathfinder, I'm experimenting with sort of two different styles for the side. The one is just straight sides and the other sort of curves around the curves of the speakers. And this is what it looks like at this point. Yeah, it's got a bit of a front back curve to it, sort of banana shape. This is the height of the tweeter and you kind of want the tweeter about the height of your ear. The one that we do after this, the real one, will be a little bit higher, which I think will put it at just the right height. You can see how it's curved here like a banana. And I think having some boards to clamp it would make this perfectly straight each time. And yeah, this curved side, I don't know about that. 
it's harder to do, and I really don't think it changes the aesthetic much. I think the straight almost looks better. And remember that part that I laid up at the beginning that was all one sheet of gel coat. This is that part. And basically to prove to myself that I can make a good part without a bunch of drips and other stuff that was on the first part that I made. The part that got made into that Pathfinder prototype. Yeah, this looks great. The only thing on it is little extra fibers from the fiberglass. I love this. You can hear when the glass gets clean. And now that the glass is clean again, I'm going to put a bunch of layers of paste wax on it to get it ready for laying up more fiberglass parts or more silicone or whatever gets done there next. And this is filling in the gap between the front and the back, which was never a problem with boats because where the deck and the hull meet, there's, that's hidden by a rub rail. And the gel coat cuts off a lot easier if you catch it at the right time when it's a little bit rubbery. And this is what it looks like now that I've fixed that edge. So I'm pretty much convinced that I can make a decent speaker enclosure now. And at this point, we're going to pick out much more expensive drivers. And I'll do it all over again, but for real this time, instead of a learning experience and prototypes.